this is Julie Lubinsky. I am the web manager for Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation. I'd like to welcome you all to this Reed Foundation Live Better series. Today we have Dr. Dan, who is our family therapist. He joins us um, every uh, first Wednesday of the month for a web chat, and he's also in our community online every Wednesday um, when he's not doing the web chat from 3 to 4. So please um, log on to our online community, ChristopherReed.org slash community, and leave your question for him and his healing, the mind and heart um, area of the discussion. Um, but he does look all over, so um, he'll answer your questions. And I am going to now turn it over to Dan. Hi, Dan. Hey, Julie. How are you today? I am feeling okay that everybody's poking me today and I'm not getting the answers I need. <laughs> How's that? Who's poking you, young lady? <laughs> um, all over. Many different requests all over. It's mostly work requests and then not getting answers I need for specific questions in a timely manner. It's trying to just trying to juggle it all and then I don't uh, know what I'm what I'm feeding my family for dinner. So um it's it's very unlikely that your family's gonna starve. But I I do wanna say something before we get to gratitude. And that's this, I went to a conference, uh, maybe in the fall, with Pema Chodron, who P-E-M-A, C-H-A-D-R-O-N, who is a um, Buddhist nun, she's about 80 years old now, and has written some of the best books I've ever read on anxiety and trauma. Anyway, I was at this conference with her, and 80 years old woman, and she said, I finally realized what enlightenment means. And I'm thinking, man, you've been a nun for almost 60 years, and now you're realizing it. <laughs> so she goes on to say, she says, um, well, here's how I found out. She says, I was watching TV the other day. Well, this has me even more intrigued because you're going to find out what enlightenment is by watching TV. So she goes on to say, yeah, I was watching a commercial for a mattress. Even more intriguing, right? About how you're going to find enlightenment. She said, it, there's a picture of a woman smiling as she's laying on this mattress. Evidently very happy, you know? Her husband walks in, and he's got two ostriches behind him that he brings into the room. And he says, honey, I've got great news. I sold everything we own, and I bought these ostriches, and we're going to start an ostrich farm. And not changing her expression from that smile, she says, I'm comfortable with that. She said, and that's enlightenment. When you're comfortable, when you're comfortable with your life as it is, whether it's pretty or not, that's enlightenment. When you're comfortable not getting the answers you want ideally or not being able to perform the way they want you to or you think you should, to be able to look in the mirror and say, I'm comfortable with that. It takes a long time to get there, but that's, that's my story of enlightenment for you. And my guess is you're not feeling deep gratitude for it. Well, I was going to say, this is a good time, you know, good subject, because I am not feeling deep gratitude just right at this moment, but I normally am, so it's good to be reminded. Ah, so you're not feeling it at this moment. What no. are you feeling? What are you feeling? Um, What's the opposite? Frustration. Okay, let me ask you another question. And I, I want to ask everybody listening this question. When you do feel gratitude, 
Julie or, or anybody who's joining me. What does that feel like, feel like in your body? Can you describe your, the way your body experiences gravity? Uh, I just joined late. This is Ron Hall. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Um, I find it rather intriguing because I have a lot to be grateful for, and I have a lot of gratitude because of the fortunate things that have happened to me. Uh, well, so you have that was bad, perfect. And you have good and I'm grateful for the good fortune. You're grateful for the bad fortune, too. Well, not really. <laughs> Wish I hadn't had it. Um, but uh, in spite of being paralyzed for 50 years plus, uh, and I prepared. I prepared for the time when I would retire and not have to work so hard and please other people uh, in spite of my paralysis, uh, you know, do better than other people uh, just overcome this stigma I had. And I saved. I saved a lot of money, but it wasn't enough. Economic downturns and so on. So I'm paying three people to take care of me. I had two two fortunate things happen just recently in the last few years that changed the whole picture, and now I'm comfortable retirement. Say more. What do you mean? What what changed for you? Well, uh, I was looking at pretty bleak future. I have no family. I mean, I have family. My my twin brother visited me last week, first time in six years. Uh, but they're far away, <laughs> and all they're all in their own struggles. So I have nobody close. I have no close friends, uh, but I have three people that I hire to take care of me, and they're taking care of me. So I have to pay them the rest of my life. Well, how do I do that? Well, I. Through my work uh, in 2002 or 2003, there was long-term care insurance. Yep. And, and I asked if I could sign up for it, and they said, but no pre-existing conditions. Before that, I tried to get long-term and short-term disability. Couldn't get it, pre-existing condition. But I could get this long-term care insurance. After paying into it for two years, while I was still working, I started receiving it. And it was supposed to last 10 years. But now it's been extended to 13, and it may be extended to 15, 16. And it may, it may last as long as my life. In addition, uh, two years before I was going to retire, and I could borrow from my retirement money and my good credit, uh, a woman came to me and had a, a proposal to make a assisted living home and she didn't have the money to finance it but she had one already it was very successful so one of my helpers and I we went together as partners we bought the home we bought the house we financed all the renovations and we we're getting handsome interest on that it's been a good investment so between the two between Dr. insurance and the investment in that home, uh, I can rest assured that I can pay my people a living wage for the rest of my life. Well, and that makes me feel comfortable. So let me let me come back to my original question. So you're grateful for that? I am. I'm very grateful for it. Okay. So here's my question: How do you? And I, I asked. Truly, this too. How do you experience gratitude in your body? Tell me as though I've never felt that 
So what, what happens to your body when you feel, really feel gratitude? What happens to my body? <laughs> yeah, what's it feel like? My body's got a mind of its own. Today it's not acting very well, trying to find out what's causing it. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's not what I mean. It wasn't a disability-related question, but does your body feel, I'll make it multiple choice, does it feel warm or cold? Does it feel tense or relaxed? Does your heart feel open or closed? Do you feel safe or unsafe, comfortable inside your own skin or, or not? Those kinds of questions. So how does gratitude feel in your body? That's, again, it, it just uh, allows me not to worry as I go through the day and not lie asleep at night, not uh, well, to be grateful that, you know, that's by, that's, uh, I don't yeah, have an immediate effect, I don't have an immediate psychological response to gratitude yeah. one time, um, one time yeah. I recall uh, uh, I was in the hospital bed shortly after I was paralyzed it was many 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 years ago and some carolers came by and they were singing carols outside the hospital I'm, I'm lying in bed immobilized and they're singing Christmas carols and I started crying. I just was so happy that I was alive. My sister's girlfriend came in. She saw me, and she was shocked. She saw me crying. I was trying to explain to her that I was happy. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you a question, one quick question. And, and then I want to turn back to uh, Julie, unless, unless she ran away from me, because I was putting her on the hot seat. So let me just ask you one final question, Ron, and that is, uh, you know, this gratitude you felt right after your accident, is, is that the kind of person you were before your accident? Were you uh, a great person? Uh, Do you remember? Well, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I don't know, I didn't feel any great gratitude uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have I didn't have anything like that you know like that feeling that I'm I'm alive yeah yeah well I mean that's the gifts of I mean I had I had romance problems and all that I, I as all teenagers do and all of that, and I had struggles, uh, right. you know, but I, I really, I, I think of my life before paralysis as being, you know, fantastic. <laughs> Everything. Well, I, I got to tell you, Ron, then I'm going to turn it back. going my way, except for pimples, I was doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to um, tell you what happens with this gratitude business. You know, I've got a poem. I don't know if I've posted it on my webpage. Julie, are you there? I am here. So, I, you know, this poem I wrote, um, I don't know if it's been posted anywhere, but it, it does address that when the heart breaks, sometimes it just breaks open. You know, um, and uh, if you don't mind, Julie, be okay if I uh, if I read it. Of course, that's fine. I'm sure. going to try to find what's the Go title? ahead. Go ahead. I read a lot of poetry and I write a lot of poetry. Dan, what's the the poem name? Well, if you give me a minute. Is it "Broken Lives and Open Hearts"? Yes. Okay. You have it. I do. So go right ahead and I'll put the link in the chat bar. Okay. So I shall read this to you with both of your permission. I don't know about the others, but it's called Broken Lives and Open Hearts. When life comes at you 
bare-knuckled and bloodthirsty. You find yourself lying naked and beaten in an unfamiliar land, and you feel the world is watching you, broken and vulnerable. So you hide your anguish, too scared to cry, because if you do, you might never stop. And everything you thought was true, gone. So without a roadmap, you get up, frightened and fragile. You take your first tentative step into the unknown. You go to doctors to heal your body, but the scars are permanent. You see other doctors to heal your broken heart, but those scars are permanent too. So after the shock and anger, after the self-pity and resentment, when you're too exhausted to fight against the truth of your life, you finally cry and cry oceans of tears. You cry for all you've lost. You cry for this good person who suffers. And then you cry for all who suffers. And so it begins. It's different from before. You find yourself not as strong physically, not even strong enough to hide your own vulnerability. And then you become aware. The air itself smells sweeter, and the sun is brighter, and your love is less tentative and more generous. And then you begin loving more people than all living beings. And somehow loving seems easier and more abundant than ever before. And you close your eyes and you hold your life and you realize that all of this love comes through the scar tissue in your broken heart. The gifts of adversity the gifts of having a broken heart where we can't hide anymore from the truth of our lives. So I think that might be a large part of what happened to you, Ron, um, and what happened to all of us, you know? So, so I, I want to come back to this issue of, of gratitude with, with you, Julian, if we can... Continue discussion? Yes. Okay. Okay. So tell me what gratitude feels like in your body, your visceral sensation when you are aware of feeling grateful. What happens below your neck? Um, my heart beats a little faster. Um I I feel this um, um, endearment feeling, and um, my self worth goes up. Now, what are you feeling right now? You said frustrated. Yes. What's that feel like in your body? It's very tense. My head is tight. I want to probably yell at somebody. Okay. All right. Is um, anybody else? Is anybody else on the call having these one having a day like mine? <laughs> oh. oh. No, but we send. No, but we send you positive energy. <laughs> uh, who's that? Hi, this is Sharina. Hey, Sharina. Hi, Sharina. Uh, you know what, Julie? I'm not having a day like that, or maybe I was. So there's just too much on my plate, and I'm too tired, and I need more rest, and I can't do all I have to do. That kind of feeling. And, and I guess what I feel is frustrated, small f, frustrated, but mostly just so tired. I want more time to 
to rest, to meditate, and then to do my work. Um, so I, I could go there, but you know what, Julie? Just between you and me right now. Right now, I feel grateful. I feel grateful, I think, for you, for our relationship. I feel grateful for your openness and honesty right now, grateful for your courage to be vulnerable. I feel grateful for you, just you and me. And I feel that in my body. I feel almost like if I let my body go, my arms would open. So you have changed my bodily experience from closed to open because you have been so open. So is that a key to changing how I feel is more trying to find that openness? It's not, I don't know about changing how you feel. It might. Uh, but, you know, if, if your heart's closed, as all our hearts have to do, your soul's being malnourished, right? You're suffering. You're closed. You're tense. Your chest is tense, right? You're suffering. Your body's suffering. Your mind is suffering. In this moment. And what do you need when you're suffering? What does a baby need or a child need or any human need when we suffer? Uh, well, so I, there's a poll on the screen if you're on the web portion right now. If everybody could answer it, it just it asks, I can, it will says, I consider myself to be a grateful person, and it goes from strongly agree to, to strongly disagree. And I'm curious how people think of themselves, because I aren't, except for just like today, today, today I feel like it's an isolated incident. Um, but normally I, I consider myself to be a very grateful person. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear everybody weigh in on that. I consider myself overall to be, uh, I would check strongly agree, but I'm grateful when I wake up. I'm grateful when I get out of my own head and look out the window and I can hear a bird or see the sun glistening off a leaf. Then I feel grateful. When I can wake up, Julie, and feel how I feel in this moment, in this relationship, on this web chat, then I'm grateful. But my God, I could, you know, I'm human. You know, I could, I could stay in my head all day, being frustrated, pushing myself to work hard. I could stay in my head all day. But once I get out of my own mind, that's the only time I feel grateful. For the, if I'm lost inside my head, it's not pretty up there. I don't know about you, but it's not pretty. You know, my Buddhist teacher says, the mind is a terrible thing to have. <laughs> Does anybody on the call have any... Um tips on being grateful that they want to share if they wake up and feel the same way as Dan or don't what what they do to remind themselves of what they have grateful in their lives yeah I would also encourage everybody involved in this discussion that you know you joined it for a reason there's something you wanted or hoped to get out of this, do yourself a favor. Make sure you get it. If you're uh, curious about something or wanted to hear something you haven't heard or to say something about yourself that you feel is important to say. Uh, 
I've already said, uh, this is Ron again, I've already said, I, I'm looking at this, uh, I guess the small things in life that happen every day, like waking up and seeing a bird and all that, I have that every day. Uh, so I'm not missing it. Uh, so I don't feel grateful very often, except for very large things like I expressed earlier. I, I, I guess my life is comfortable and constant and I'm engaged and I don't have to push I wrote a chapter yesterday, the day I didn't write a chapter. I, I didn't get to the chapter to review it. Uh, so I, I'm very free, and uh, I'm not tied down by my disability. So I just, I'm comfortable in my life after living it so long. So we, have, we have on the call Todd and Claudia. Do you also agree? What? Well, let's hear. Let's hear from from Todd and and or Claudia. Love to hear your thoughts about what we're talking about. Or or questions. Um. This is Sandra. I didn't log into the the website, so you probably okay. don't show. But um, just something that I do, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but. It kind of helps me when I'm having a poor day kind of day. If I start thinking about all the things that I do have instead of focusing on what I don't have, that seems to snap me out of it. There's always somebody that's got it worse. You know, like I'll turn on my water and think, you know, you don't really think about it, but there's people in the world that have to walk a mile, even though I can't walk. They still have to go a mile. I mean, but after I said that, I thought, well, that's not really a good analogy, but you kind of get my drift. It's like we just pull up a faucet tap and we got water. Other people, they don't have to walk two miles just to get water, and it's probably not even clean. So when I start having one of those days where I just feel so down and just like, oh, I wish so bad I could just walk on the beach and squish my toes in the sand, I have to say, but think of all the things that you do have and that you can enjoy. And so I have to shift my mind into that place of think of what is good that you've got. You know you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to anyone else? Um, it does yeah. make sense to me, but I'll tell you what, what I do is – when I'm suffering, to me that means because I've got this great faith in my body mind that when I'm suffering, it's time to suffer. And I have to tell you all that I've gone through this weekend some of the most powerful emotions I've gone through in my whole life. And then after 35, 40, 50 years of loss. I finally, you know, like I said in the poem, you cry and you cry and you cry. And finally, this 68 year old man laid in bed with the woman I trust most in this world. And I just started to sob like a four year old. This deep, deep grief about all I've lost, all I've lost, all the suffering I've had, all the losses, and all I am losing now and all I will lose, just tears that felt uncontrollable, really shook me deeply. And, and Joan, my, my girlfriend, lover, asked me the next day if I felt better, and I said, no. I don't. It, it, it's not like it just comes out and you're better. You know, that that's where I was, finally. After a lifetime of not going there, I went there. So this was my time to grieve, to mourn, to cry all those tears that have been in there all these years. And I suffered. I suffered terribly. So that was and I, as I told that story, 
and I felt and feel so raw and vulnerable, I didn't feel grateful. But I was able to hear other people feeling gratitude for me. And that helped me feel less alone. And that helped me feel grateful for all the love I have in my life. So, you know, man, when it's crying time, it's crying time. And I just want to remind callers that star six will mute your line if you, I'm hearing some noise. And to unmute it, star six, again, will um, unmute it. And, Dan, there is a comment from Claudia in the chat box. Right, let me see. I hope, um, is Claudia able to hear me? Um, so Claudia says, um, please forgive me. I'm not interacting. I'm all ears. Today's my first time I'm attending a live discussion. Um, well, Claudia, welcome. And I doubt that you're all ears because just that two sentences tells me there's a heart there, too, underneath it. Uh, and I'm, I'm so grateful that you're doing this, that you have the courage to at least type in those two sentences. If you wouldn't mind typing in another, just say what, um, what you'd like to get out of today. And, and please, don't be realistic. I've got... I'm a therapist. I've got no time for reality. So please type in what you'd like to get out of today's meeting. And, and I say that for all of you. Please just tell me a bit about what you'd like to get. You know, we've got 25 minutes or so left. I really want to help you get what you want for more time together. Well, give me a shout. What would you like to get? Or if there's anybody on the phone who would like to uh, tell me what they would like to get out of our meeting. And then, um, you know, whatever you share, I'll be grateful for it. Dr. Dan, this is Sharina. I really feel grateful, like, in my life for the things that I have. And I, I know a lot of people say that sometimes they... Um, I'm always happy, and people are like, you're always happy, but I really am grateful for everything that I have. So I kind of wake up, I'm just the type of person that wakes up like that. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a rainy day, it doesn't matter, you know, the problems that I might be going through, I always find things to be grateful for. I just feel that way. So I don't know how I could help somebody else feel the same. I think it's just kind of instilled in me. Have you always been that way? Always. Well, I, I, I've got a funny story to tell you, Serena. So my mother was, um, I mean, if you Google um, cranky and pessimistic, her picture will come up. <laughs> like she, would have won the, she would have won the Nobel Prize for that. And um, every, every time I, you know, I said something positive, yeah, I was being naive, which might be true. So anyway, we go we go to a restaurant, she and I. Now I gotta be in my forties now. Well, ten years after the accident at least. And there's this waitress I know. It's a restaurant I frequented when I when I had my office outside of Philadelphia. And I, I know this waitress and, and she's one of these women, Serena, that sounds like you. It's like she's at She's genetically yes, happy. Yes, and I She's failed. She's genetically but... happy and always seems to be smiling. And, and like, you can see it's at her hard wiring, you know? Mm -hmm. so I, yeah. So I said, I said to my mother, I said, Mom, I said, look at how happy she is. So, you know what my mother said? She said, yeah, what does she know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Now you understand why I'm neurotic. I mean, I don't even have to tell you another story. And that'll, that'll tell you why I'm neurotic. But, you know, um, you know, we are considered naive. But I, I agree with you that 
you know, gratitude can be hardwired, but I also want to say that gratitude can be cultivated. And all you have to do to cultivate it is um, to be willing to do it, to want to do it. And um, I'll give you some tips if you want. But um, if you want, if you want tips, uh, you're going to have to pay close attention because it's very complicated. And what I will do is type them in somewhere. Julie, where, where can I uh, write in this uh, these tips after after we close? Because I can't do it now while uh, you know while I'm online while I'm talking. You can't, can't list it on the website. Julie? No, I was trying to reach Julie there. You can you can e you can email me them afterwards and I will make sure they're included with the archive on the website. And I see that Claudia did type something in. Good chat. Bob. Uh, Claudia, let's hear. Claudia said, I'd like to hear your advice on the importance to express gratitude to others, but most importantly to oneself, especially when we're going through the darkest time. So I don't think it's important at all to express gratitude to others. Um, I think it's more important, and what changes our lives is when we can experience gratitude, feel it, not know what we're grateful for. I mean, we could all tick off a hundred things about what we are grateful for, what we should be grateful for, but to really experience gratitude, feel it, in your body, mind, soul, to feel it at that level is what changes your life and begins actually to rewire your brain. It's, it's a critical intervention for pessimism or depression or even hopelessness is to begin to experience gratitude. And I'll explain myself in just a minute. But, you know, you say when we're going through the darkest time. I don't know if I could feel gratitude when I was going through what I went through Sunday night. I guess at the same time, I was feeling gratitude for Joan, that I felt safe enough with her to go through this. Gratitude that, that the way she listened to me without giving me advice. But I, I've got to be honest, I couldn't feel that real deeply. The way I feel right now is I look out the window and watch, watch you know, the birds play and watch the squirrels annoy me because they're eating all my bird food. And, you know, that kind of gratitude I feel deeply. I couldn't feel that Sunday night. I, I, like I knew it was there, but... I couldn't feel it. So when you go through the darkest of times, Claudia, and we all do, I mean, there's a reason they talk about dark night in the soul. We all do go through the darkest time. There it's time for faith. And I don't mean a religious faith. A faith that even though we think it'll last forever, or feels like it'll last forever, faith that it won't last. That these dark, dark times never last for a very long time. They often happen at night, and they often go, to sl go away when we go to sleep, and they're not there the next morning. We can recreate them the next day. We can bring our attention back to what's darkest, and get there and our emotions will follow. But the darkness itself doesn't last. So I say, so this is my time now to be dark. Or, or you know, I, I gave a talk last night when I was in the midst of all this fragility and vulnerability, and I felt so fragile and so insecure 
and second guessing myself and all that stuff. But before I went in, I said to myself, okay, this is my time to be, to be neurotic and, and crazy. No, and it's, it's, look, it's a neighborhood in my mind. I, I unfortunately visit more than I would like to. I thought it was it's, mine. It's, it's my time. So I, it, I don't think it's healthy to force yourself to feel a way you're not feeling or to think a way you're not thinking. It's healthy just to open up and allow yourself to experience what you're experiencing. And I think when we do that, when we do that, we'll get to learn about our lives better, our minds better, our resources. We'll be less scared of ourselves and our emotions. And then we can feel grateful not just for our lives, but for who we are, for our mind, for the fact that we have a life. So um, don't force yourself to go out of the darkest times. You know, there's a, a great, great poem by Rilke called The Guest House. And, and he says, he opens up by saying, Claudia, he says, um, this being human is like a guest house. He says, every day, a new arrival. You know, the joy, the delight, the sham, the fear, the terror, the love. Every day, a new arrival. And, and he goes on to say, welcome them all into your guest house. All of these emotions, even the dark ones, welcome them all. Even the ones that feel like the darkest storm of all. Welcome them all, because who knows, that dark storm could be cleaning your house so it's ready for a new arrival. And, I mean, that real could do new stuff, you know? Be open to what you experience and be open to who you are. You're an interesting person who suffered adversity, who has a tender heart, who wants happiness and well-being. That's who you are. You're interested. He's interested in you as I am. So that's my thing. And you know, Claudia, right now, I feel so very grateful for you, for what your question just opened up in me and the emotions that opened. So, so I want to thank you very much. And Boy, I hope I answered your question. And if not, you know, type in again. Um, so, Julie. Yes, Sam. Julie. So I want to talk to you and our <laughs> listeners about what we can do to change our lives. So we can start tomorrow. Find five things starting tomorrow during the course of our day that we feel grateful for. Not in our heads, but something we actually see or experience. You know, a, a leaf, something in nature. The fact that even you don't have a cold right now. Or if you do, the fact that it's only allergies and not something more simple. But anything during the day, five things that you can feel grateful for. And just pause for 10 seconds and feel that gratitude. Just feel it in your body. Five things a day, every day. Record them when you get home. Or record them when they're happening. This whole process is going to take you 10, 15 minutes a day. So do that every day, five things. And then the next week, increase it to 10. And after all, after a while, you're just going to find yourself just open-hearted and feeling grateful for so much. 
and the stress and distress and insecurity and darkness, they're going to come up. But they're not going to last long, and, um, and you know, they're not going to inform your life like they do now. Just train your brain to experience gratitude, to notice, to notice what you're grateful for. There's so much research on this, and, and it's really powerful, compelling research about what changes takes place just by virtue of gratitude. And, and I've treated people who have been severely depressed, who can't tolerate medication, and we engage in this of, of gratitude and keeping a gratitude journal, and it's changed their lives dramatically. Simple. It really is simple. Really. Um, so I'll write it up, and Julie will post it. And uh, Claudia just tells me, thank you. Yes, you did answer my question. Um, Claudia, you're the best. I mean, uh, so I hope you join us Next time, next month, I have no idea what we'll be talking about. Hopefully, you'll give me some advice about what you would like to talk about. Um, because, I, I, you know, that's my job. That's my most fervent wish is to, you know, to be where you want me to be. You know, just, you know, say what you want me to say. Because all I want to do in this job and in my life is to be helpful, and uh, I'm grateful for uh, for being able to do that. So it looks like um, it, I mean, it looks like Julie. I'm looking at these poll results. It, it looks like I've been stuck here with a group of grateful people. <laughs> stuck. What's the matter with you people? Don't you know you've got disabilities and you got all this stuff going on? You're supposed to be miserable. Didn't you read the book? I truly had a patient last year in my office and, and he was he was just trying to express how stuck he felt in his life and and without even opening his eyes, he's just deep inside and he says Sometimes I just feel so paralyzed. And then he opened his eyes and he looked at me and I said, you know what? I said, sometimes I feel that way too. But it's not a joke, you know? Sometimes I feel paralyzed. Most of the time, I don't. So, you know, it's all how we experience our lives. All how we experience our lives. How lucky we all are to have this. How lucky we all are to have each other. You know, I'm so, so grateful for this. And truly, my friend, I really am grateful for you, for our, uh, for our relationship, and, and your openness here in this venue. I, I don't think this would be so good without you. I really don't. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate your honesty, too, and you're way more honest than I am, and I think that helps all of us be comfortable um, calling in every month, so thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the strength to be otherwise. You know, it's a, there's a, it seems like a poetry day, but there's a line in a poem uh, and, and I forget who the poet was, but um, Rumi maybe. And, and he said, I want to unfold before you because where I am folded, there I am alive. And I really feel that way, too, especially as I get, as I get older. It's like I don't have the strength to stay folded. It's too much energy. You know, I know people say I'm courageous, but it doesn't feel like courage. You know, it feels like this is what I have to do to live my life. 
So how lucky am I? How lucky are we? You know? Hey, Julie. Yes. What would you like to talk about next month? Well, we're coming into the probably the better weather. weather. Um, I don't want to talk any more down stuff. No more trauma. I like the grateful. Um, I would love to hear um, um, I, I, to get more people talking about um, positive things that they can share with others, um, whether it be tips or an experience. And again, like you said, how that made them feel. Like one time I brought up how the deep breathing helps me. Um, so I'd love to hear other tips like that from people that works, you know, to help them get through the day, enjoy the day, enjoy others, feel loved, love themselves. All right. It's a deal. We can do that. Uh, and, I have I have something. Uh, you said that right. people think of you, Dan, as courageous. Well, some people think of me as courageous, and others think of me as dangerous. Yeah. Uh, in other words, I want to leave this house. Uh, I was I was here for two months the last time I left. I left this morning. I drive my own van. Uh, I want to go out and do things. And uh, some people around me think that's dangerous. How can I change that? Well, I had two thoughts. My grandfather, who came over here from the pogroms in Russia, he would say to me, if enough people call you a horse, it might be time to taste hay. So, you know, I, you've got to look at this feedback. You can look at it as judgment, and they're wrong and I'm right. Or you can look at it as 100% true, and then you're insecure and you're going to give up driving. But if you look at and no, explore driving. what... What in there is true and of value to you? And what in there is worthless? And if you look at it carefully, you'll be able to find both in, in most of this feedback. You'll be able to find something in there that is valuable to you that could help you in your life. And very often, the rest is not. The rest comes from their anxiety or their value judgment. But, uh, you know, for growth purposes, don't assume that they're 100% wrong. You know, even if they're 95% wrong, that other 5% can help us grow. So, and, and I learned that from, oh, God, I forget the woman's name. We had a show on this. But it's... Uh, it was called Thanks for the Feedback. And she was with the uh, Harvard negotiation team. Sheila Heen was her name. And, and that's what she said. Uh, really I've, lived my life doing, I've lived my but, life doing what people said was impossible. Yeah, yeah, of course. So listen, I want to, um, so I, I want to thank everybody for joining us, for having this discussion with us, Mark. My great thanks to uh, to uh, you, Ron, to Claudia, who you know had the courage to connect with us and uh, even to open her heart to us. So, um, so there. Thanks for all of you, and I'm really, really looking forward to hanging out with you next month and even next week on the, the Healing Heart and Mind uh, um, discussion group. So. Thank you, thank you, and Julie, thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody um, for joining us today. And as you know, I'm a stickler for trying to get everybody to talk. So, um, you know, um, please dial in again next month, um, and hopefully we'll have a really good conversation between all of us. So I don't have to talk so much. So, no, I'm kidding. I don't mind at all. Um, 
So thank you for joining us today for the Reed Foundation Live Better series. And um, again, stop by the community every Wednesday. Leave a question for Dan, and we will um, talk online again on May 6th. Thank you.